Hey, what's going on? Thank you for tuning into While We Were Working. It's a show that helps you become a better people leader and catch up on the latest and greatest HR trends and topics that you may not have been aware of. Why? Because you were so busy working. This week, we've got a great episode. We're going to be talking about remote jobs that are actually available, but nobody seems to want. And we've got in our consultants corner, uh, we're going to talk about one of the most interesting policies that we created this past year, which is for companion animals. I was literally just talking with someone today about pet insurance and how that's becoming a perk that people want to talk about. So this week we're talking about remote jobs. We're talking about care for animals and let's get into it. So uh, without further ado, Summer, consulting practice manager here at Jumpstart and awesome co-host of the show. Welcome and could you set us up for while we were working? Of course, it's another great week here on the show. So thanks for setting that up, Joey. We've got some really cool things that we're talking about. And thanks for our listeners for joining. The article we're talking about today is from Business Insider. And the title of this article is, Yes, There Are are work from home jobs that nobody wants. And I must admit, Joey, that caught my attention because we've discussed on prior episodes how in demand work from home jobs are. So it, you know, caught my attention, pulled me right in. And I thought the article had some interesting tidbits. So here we are. Uh, talking about it on today's show. Yeah, I couldn't imagine a world where people wouldn't want to work from home, although I'm biased, admittedly. And I do know that, uh, what, 25% of the workforce now works from home, and I think that number is, is shrinking. But to think that there are job opportunities out there that are available and people just don't want to, to work at, uh, it's pretty interesting. I think they need to hire us so that we can make it out cooler. But uh, but 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 where should we go from the article? What what stood out? What stood out to you? This is a Business Insider article written by uh, Tim Paradise or Paradis. Um, what 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 stood out to you? Well, I think there are first a couple of things because it it does indeed actually talk about kind of the broader landscape of uh of the market right now, and you know first you know we kind of have to start with like just in general, that there are some jobs that are so unpopular that job seekers are showing little interest. And they were able to capture this data by uh, referring to a job search engine and reviewing those open jobs and monitoring the activity on them. And should be no surprise, um, this is in the article, that jobs like trash collectors cashiers, uh, fast food workers, even despite some of the the wage increases that we've seen over time, are really, really difficult to fill. And, you know, things like uh, hotel front desk clerks and pharmacy techs and uh, restaurant hosts are like all, all really, really hard jobs. And, you know, then, of course, it talks a little bit about you know, working from home and some of those jobs that are still difficult to fill as well. So really pretty fascinating in that regard. But I'm curious, Joey, what your thoughts are and maybe what you've heard in regards to work from home jobs and or jobs that other companies are having a hard time filling. Summer, I'm making this up, but go with me here because I think that there is a a thread that connects all of these uh, in-person jobs that are hard to fill, whether it's fast food worker, trash collector, cashier, pharmacy tech, restaurant house. And I've been a pharmacy tech before. One of my first jobs, I was working at uh, at CVS. The, the thing that connects them all is that you really don't have immediate access to your phone and you don't have the ability to tune in, check your social media, uh, visibly be on your phone. You've got to be like on. And I'm just wondering if our love affair with our phones is so much so that people are saying, no, I don't want that job because I can't check my phone. Because think about it. 
if you if you've ever gone to let's say you went to a restaurant and you want to check in at the front if you see the restaurant host on their phone you're probably like oh they're not going to be well attentive here uh this person's going to ignore me they're not going to give my full attention and so it probably has a stigma for you as the as a consumer and i think job seekers are the same way where it's like, okay well where can I work where I might be able to have access to the outside world? And that's just my just that's just my thought on on that one. Before I jump into the that next question you asked, what do you think? Do you think I'm far off or <laughs> am I am I kind of close to what what do you think? I mean, I think it could be a variety of things, truly. I, I don't think that you're far off. I, I do think that there are some team members that that connection is important to them and they may choose one job over the other because of it. But when, you know, I look at the article and, and some of the information that they shared, again, I don't think it should be any surprise, but it was really like a really? Um, because I, I guess I had uh, wrongly assumed that work from home jobs were in so much demand that like I would think all of them, you know, would be in demand. But customer service uh, customer support specialist or call center reps are the two roles that are not in demand even when they're working from home. So I think that what you were saying, Joey, it, it could be part of it, right? Yep. You're always on your customer service. You're on the phone all the time, nonstop. Uh, there's really no like breaks besides your regular breaks. But when the folks who wrote this article dove into it a little bit more to try to identify like why work from home won't necessarily attract workers. It has to do with, uh, you know, kind of making sure that there is a next step, like knowing that, you know, if I'm going to take a role, that there is some sort of future. And uh, it appears that these positions are less desirable for likely a variety of factors, but they're just not being a clear, defined next step for them. Let's address the elephant in the room about why customers support jobs are tough, whether you're in person or working from home. It's because AI is coming and is already positioned to replace so many of them. I mean, Summer, you said it, you know, wanting to have that next step. Well, if your next step is the unemployment line, that career is not of interest. And so I think that uh, groups that have these customer support roles and that are having a trouble filling them, I think you really have to think about, well, what is your your employer brand? What is your commitment to, to growth? Uh, and, and really highlight those things so that you can start to attract. Uh, I, I don't necessarily believe that just because you're in an industry or just because you're a type of role, you have to follow the trend. I think if you're thoughtful in how you present your organization and what it's like to work at your organization, you can reverse some of those trends and have great results in hiring. But you might have to work with us to get those results. Oh, gosh, Joey, you set that up so great. I, I couldn't agree more. And that's ultimately where after reading this article and, you know, kind of thinking about it and checking my perspective, I realized that. We, as an organization, um, as a consulting firm and, you know, orgs that we work with or who are listening, it's just a reminder that we can't keep doing the same thing that we've done before. And it's recognizing that as tech change, the needs of workers change. This is a prime example. And so if you have these positions and you're really struggling to fill them, it does require taking a step back and saying, OK, what can we do differently? How can we meet the expectations and needs of these workers. So if what we're finding is that they're not interested in it because, you know, they're dealing with negativity all day or there's not enough breaks or yeah. they see no upward potential, <laughs> those are all things that can be solved. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to make the change and recognize that, yes, it may cost money or it may cost time, but if you don't have any team members to do your job, so that's an even bigger, more expensive. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, you know, m mentioned it earlier about AI potentially coming in and and uh, replacing workers in these roles. 
But as I mentioned in the TEDx talk that I gave recently, you know, you, you have to think about is introducing AI going to be a profitable thing for your business? And not all companies and not all roles benefit from just launching and leasing AI into the public, right? Yeah, it's cool if you're, you know, McDonald's and you have a, a, a robot kiosk for orders. But if you have an irate customer and they're talking to a chat bot, that's likely going to tarnish your brand reputation, you might lose some customers. And so you really do need to think about um, getting this getting this part right. Getting this part right. I, I couldn't agree more, Joey. Really cool topic to talk about. I, yeah. I think this you know, will continue to change over time. But who knew there were work from home jobs that nobody wants? I would have never guessed. Yeah, well, I would have never guessed it either. I can't even imagine. I couldn't have imagined before this episode what those jobs could have been. But uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go to uh, Consult Quarter. And Consult Quarter, as always, it's our... It's our reflections of the good, bad, the ugly of life in the trenches as a HR pro. Uh, we um, respond to uh, customer emails or we respond to community emails, social media, any thoughts that you have. You can reach out to us at hello at jumpstart-hr.com. And that's a way to share your thought, question or trend that you want us to cover. This week is uh, a cool reflection. Um, about our and I say our now because I have a puppy, but our family members that are are often overlooked in the benefits portion, and that's our pets. Uh, so one of the most interesting policies we created this past year was for companion animals and um, pet and uh, pet paw eternity and bereavement leave, and so summer, you know. What are some of the reflections that you have about about these um, about these policies? Could you give some context around maybe uh, the organizations? Uh, maybe were they asking for it? Were employees asking for it? Was it something we saw in the news and said, "Oh, this might be something to roll out"? Tell us a little insight into how these policies came about. Sure. Yeah. Well, there, there's a little bit of a story here, and you know, I I love to tell stories, and I I think for Anybody who has ever lost a, uh, an animal in their family, they understand that we grow attached to them. And oftentimes the loss of them impacts us in more ways than maybe we expected. And the organization that this policy was created for um, is actually in uh, the animal advocate uh, space. So it's no surprise that they created something along these lines and they, yeah, oh brand. Uh, re yep, they recognize that animals in our family are not necessarily pets, um, but they, they are companion animals, right? That they provide additional comfort, support, and love to us in a way that is really, I think, pet undermines uh, the significance of them in our lives. But even beyond this organization, I think we can't argue. Again, anybody who's lost an animal in their family will tell you how much it does emotionally affect them and for some a very long time. So I think you don't need to be um, in, you know, kind of the animal rights space to have a policy like this if you recognize how much animals mean to your team. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's um, there's so so many folks who uh, became pet owners in the pandemic, and I just expect that the trend will grow. Uh, and even thinking about now, one of the conditions that people look at when they're buying houses is is there a backyard for my animal, for my for my family member, my pet? And so as for so long, our companion animals has it's only been an issue of like home things, but now it's it's definitely uh, coming up at work. Um, so I think it's I think it's awesome to consider having a policy 
consider offering, you know, as a benefit, um, you know, a, a subsidy or some sort for pet insurance, because I'm learning it is not cheap. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, just just thinking about how can you improve employee experience, uh, and part of that is showing up for the ones that employees care about, and that's not just uh, human family; it's uh, animal family too. Uh, so that's those, uh, yeah. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah, let's talk about these a little bit because if you're listening to our show and you think this sounds like completely wild and you're not quite sure what it could look like, you know, the great thing is it can look like whatever it is that you determine is best for your team. I do think to have policies like this, it's important to have a high trust environment where you have a team who is not known for, you know, abusing other time off policies that you may have. And what it could look like is there's kind of two components uh, for this policy that we created. One was what we'll call paternity, right? So it's like a paternity, paternity leave. And it essentially uh, looks like if you, um, if you bring a companion animal into your family, that there is time off available could be paid, could be unpaid uh, for you to like learn your new responsibilities, right? Joey is a new pet owner, you know. Oh my goodness, yeah. It, there's, there is time necessary and it probably pulls you away from some of your other responsibilities and it's a real, it's a real adjustment. Summer, you know that my, uh, so Cash, his name is Cash, he's a barn doodle, he's awesome. I am so thankful that we got him during a holiday break because the whole idea of adjusting, having having cash adjust to us and this new location, to think of doing that while running full speed at work. Uh, I mean, even just a week, having that week with him um, was incredibly helpful. And he's, he's a bit more chill now. Uh, he sleeps through the night now. Um, but, but just, yeah, Paul Eternity, it, it, it's worth considering because even if you allow your employees to have that amount of time away to invest in their, in their, um, in their home life, I would suspect that they will in turn repay that with loyalty and appreciation and productivity. Uh, so, yeah. That I I am a living witness of that time that's required to invest in uh, creating new normals uh, when a when an animal enters your life. That's right. From an employer standpoint, you might be saying, "Well, but we already offer vacation time. So if somebody really needs this time to you know bond and get adjusted." Uh, with this new responsibility, they would just take their vacation time. And my response to that would be, yes, and <laughs> if you choose to offer this time unpaid, having it as a policy, though, sends a very different message, right? It makes it very clear that we understand from a company standpoint how important this time is. And before you even ask, we're letting you know this is okay and encourage team members to take the time because from an emotional well-being standpoint, it gives team members the time to bond with their new animal. Uh, it's going to promote overall well-being for your team. And I think it sends a message from the employer standpoint that like we know you have responsibilities outside of work. And if you're happy outside of work, we know you're going to be happy at work and everybody wins. <laughs> yeah. So, so. With that being said, I think we could transition to maybe some of the, the practical, right? So let's let's think about what it would mean to introduce these sort of policies. And I know that you have past experience, so I'd love to, to hear that. But I, I think the first step would be to um, evaluate or ask your team members, like, hey, who, who are pet owners? Uh, who have uh, animal companions at home? If so, what what type? And collecting that sort of data would be super helpful because then it allows you to understand how much of a priority this could be. I mean, you know, we talked about initially, uh, you know, 
work from home jobs that nobody wants, right? Uh, but what about those work in office jobs that nobody wants because they can't tend to their animal? Um, so, so yeah, what are, what are some things people should think about if they want to adopt a plan or some policies around animal care? For sure. Uh, I'll say before, before I dive into that, because we didn't talk, uh, about like the loss, uh, of, a uh, companion animal, kind of the bereavement leave. I'll, I'll touch on that really quick and then answer your question. Sure. Uh, but the the idea, you know, we talked a little bit about the the paternity aspect, but of course, when somebody loses an animal, there's um, you know necessary time that they need to cope with the loss of that loved one. And so, to really think through, if you don't currently have a bereavement policy for humans, I strongly suggest you know looking at that. And um, if you have one, um, to consider potentially offering the same benefits or even a modified version for the loss of a companion animal as well, recognizing there's a significant effect on your team. And when you're rolling these out, I think the first thing to consider is how much uh, is your team using current benefits and time off policies responsibly? Because if you already have the sense that like giving them more is going to be abused, then it may not be the right time or the right benefit to implement. But I'm going to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. They have employees they trust to use their benefits responsibly. And I think it's, you know, first uh, writing the policy and putting it in your handbook or standalone policies and then communicating it to the team uh, managers in advance so that they can answer questions for the team uh, and then making everybody aware of what's available and how to access it in addition to where to go if they have questions. Mm -hmm. Really from there, it's about monitoring the utilization and evaluating it perhaps on an annual basis to determine uh, how much is this costing us in terms of time and or money if it's paid time off? And also seeking that feedback as to, is this something our team members value? And is there something missing that we could be or should be considering that we aren't already? And I think that process is just the general structure uh, that I tend to follow when I'm working with clients when they're evaluating new benefits or policies as a whole yeah and and the groups that are people who are, are are tuning into this who say summer that all sounds great uh, you're you're right on track i just don't have the time and we don't have the person to do that uh i think it would be great to to reach out to us and consider either a subscription with our team or to uh get one of our uh prepaid packages which you can Get on our website, jumpstart-hr.com slash shop, and you can have someone take care of this benefit evaluation process for you from our team. It may even be Summer because she loves it so much. Uh, but but um, yes, you should you should absolutely follow follow what uh, what Summer recommended as far as as far as steps and guidelines and best practice. Well, I do love this stuff and so does everybody else on our consulting team. And I, I think that you said it well, like it, it does take time and sometimes it's time that prevents us from moving some of these things forward. But at Jumpstart, we have the immense benefit of working with so many organizations and taking the lessons learned and the different, the different programs, policies, benefits, kind of picking and choosing to make customized solutions for our clients. So if you're listening and you think you could benefit from some extra help, we've, we've got you. We're here for you. We've certainly got you covered. Check us out at jumpstart-hr.com. You can either schedule a 15-minute chat to learn more about our services and how we can help, or you can browse our website uh, online store and take advantage of some of our services that you can more readily just point click and buy. And also, if you are listening to this, tuning in, and you're an HR pro, we've got our social community called HRU, which is a great place to 
ask their questions of us and of the community and get answers in real time. So check that out at hru.jumpstart-hr.com. Summer, I think this is a great way to end the uh, end this show today. So without further ado, I mean, do you have any party thoughts, things you want to share? I think we covered it. It's been another great week. And, you know, certainly if you're listening and have questions, we'd love to hear from you. But until until then, I'll see you next week. All right. See you next week.